You're listening to the Traffic and Funnel Show. You know, if you're like us, um, we got into this obviously to have impact, to be able to generate revenue. Um, but we don't want to be a slave to our companies. And we don't just want it to be another job, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah. We don't want it to just be another job. Would you agree with that? Yes. So I'm kind of a high maintenance person, if you guys don't know that. We know. What? We know. <laughs> Say that one more time? No. All right. So I want you guys to write this down. Write this down. We're going to talk about hiring. The goal of hiring is to acquire assets that will help take you to your goals. So you need to hire for where you are, for where you are going without you carrying all the burden. So the goal of hiring is to acquire assets that will help take you to your goals. So you need to hire for where you are going without you carrying all the burden. I want you to write this next one down too. Know what stage you are in and where you'll be in the next three to six months. Know what stage you are in and where you will be in the next three to six months. You guys get that? Yes. So I think that the hiring thing, the people, the processes, I think this is the hardest part of business. It's not marketing. It's not offers. I don't think it's sales. I think it's the people and processes. To set yourself up where you have people who can run the parts of your business that need to be run without you. Um, and I think this is the thing that really keeps people from growing, scaling, having stability, not being owned by their company, not being owned by their clients, not being owned by just all the stuff that comes from owning a business. You get this stuff right and you will be able to scale your business. You will be able to remove yourself from your business. So the thing that we've seen a lot of people, they figure out the marketing thing, they figure out the sales thing, but they don't figure out this thing. This is massive, it's huge. So I wanna give you guys some mistakes that we've made, and feel free to jump in. Bro, this is all new, I don't even know. Anytime. These notes are yours. Um, so these are some big mistakes that if, if you guys and gals cannot make these mistakes, it'll be amazing, you'll have less heartache, heartbreak, less money out of your pocket, less money and opportunity costs. It will just save you a lot of trouble. Number one, hiring people and not offloading the burden. What's We've made mean? this mistake. What's that mean? So if you hire someone, right, the whole purpose of hiring that person is to be able to offload the burden that you are carrying, right? Tasks, things that you're doing in the business. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say that this is what an entrepreneur does at first. It's probably the first two, three, four hires is you hire them, then don't let them do anything. Ben can say amen. You've all go ahead, we, Ben. We've all done that. It's a big, big, big mistake. Massive. Next. Yep. Hiring too fast, firing too slow. What does that mean? So you it wants to, you want it to be the opposite, right? You want to hire <laughs> slow and fire fast, because hiring the right person is really, really crucial. So. We, a lot of times, because we have not really been prepared in where we are going, like understanding what's so funny. I'm just connecting with people while you're talking and like having moments, because everyone seems scared right now, so I'm trying to like just loosen them up, you know? <laughs> so we just had a moment. Yeah, okay. she agrees with what you just said. Yeah, I love we, it. We, had, we bonded, okay. Right. Do you wanna, you wanna go through this? No. What, you I'm, sure? I'm just having fun. All right. <laughs> yeah, because... <laughs> I think the thing that people miss out on is how much cost there is in hiring the wrong person. Huge. Massive. It's not just financial, right? You're, when you're dealing with people, there's so many other things involved, right? Um, if that person has a family, kids, they're responsible for it. And if you don't take the time to hire the right person, 
and you find out in 60 days, 90 days that they're not the right person, and maybe they've made a transition or whatever it is, then what happens when you find out that they're not the right fit? You have to let that person go. And so it's not just a financial thing, a thing that you spent time with them, onboarding them, getting them into your processes, but just the emotional costs can be really high. And this is when I, when I say that when people don't get this figured out, I think this is one of the big things that will throw them off. When you're dealing with people, it's so different than marketing. You're dealing with data, numbers, ads, right? You're so disconnected. As compared to people, you have the situations, you know, if you hire someone, again, that does have kids, they have a family. You know, now it's not just Bob that you're hiring, but it's what about their kids, you know, their daughter, their son. And, and so this is stuff that we've walked through, and it's been super intense for us. So that's why I think if you, if you guys can really get this, let it soak in, um, then it'll save you a lot of the emotional heartaches, aside from the costs, right? Aside from the tangible and opportunity costs. Um, so the next one is not giving new hires room to make mistakes, this has been big for us in the past. If you have a culture that people are afraid to fail, it's going to be a dangerous culture, right? Because what's going to happen is people will start to hide their, their failures, right? They don't want to be found out. And then if you, don't, if you have things that are, are just covered up, then you won't have clarity on how to deal with the issue, implement the right processes. So... Kind of a rule that we have is it's okay to fail, but not fail at the same thing over and over. Anything to add to that? No. Not having measurable KPIs for your people. Right, if you don't have clarity for what you need from your people, how are they going to have clarity? Right, so as, as the CEOs of our businesses, that's our responsibility to establish that. It's not your employee's responsibility to establish that. Make sense? Yep. So 2015, I'm talking to my wife. We already have the business at this point, and we start talking about having children. Uh, just stay with me for a minute. I'm, n- I'm not going to teach you how to have children in this ad. I just want to explain how we came up with this program. And my wife looks at me, and she says... You know, I don't really want to have children right now because I feel like I would be raising a child by myself. Ooh, that was a moment for me. And I remember thinking like, you know, I'm doing all these things. I'm building this business and I'm busy all the time. And I know she knows that, but it really hit home that I have have not figured out how to be 100% at work and 100% at home and 100% in the areas that I care about. Entrepreneurs make this mistake all the time where they just think that they can work harder and harder and harder and they can make more money, but it doesn't work that way. And I had to take a long time to really figure this out that Taylor, you're doing the wrong things and it doesn't matter how many more hours you work. If you're working on the wrong things, it's not going to fix the problem. So I began to scour the complete internet. All of the productivity experts and gurus that are probably familiar with today. I read all their books, I bought all their programs, and I started for the first time figuring out not how to do more, but how to actually get more done with less. There's a crazy idea. And I can honestly say in the last three years, our businesses have, I don't know if I could say numbers on this ad, but our businesses have probably grown by six to 700%, three of them. And I'm working less than I've ever worked before, not because I'm not a hard worker, but because I have learned that probably 90% of the things that is in a typical entrepreneur's day shouldn't even be there. You shouldn't even be doing it. So I created a methodology, not only to be more productive, but to be more effective. And when you marry these two ideas together, you become a powerhouse. You're able to do more, but you're able to not have to work as hard because you're actually doing the things that matter most. Forget who said it, but the things that matter most should never be at the mercy of things that matter least. That is the methodology and the philosophy behind this system. It will change your life. We have thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs who are using it. My whole staff uses it, and it's crazy. You gotta check it out. I think it's really cheap as well. And hopefully my story is moving to you. If you want to accomplish more things in your life without having to sacrifice the areas that matter most, pick up this system and go through it.
trafficandfunnels.com slash productivity masterclass. That's trafficandfunnels.com slash productivity masterclass. Um, this one is, this might be the most important, is the wrong tolerance level for underperformers. So this is where we have held on to people for way too long. Our tolerance level has not been right. And so it's been where we've taken on a lot of burden, a lot of emotional turmoil, uh, financial costs, opportunity costs, because we haven't had clarity on KPIs. We haven't had clarity on what our tolerance level is for our people, what the performance level needs to be for them, what we need out of them as a team member and an asset for our team. And so if we don't have clarity, then we don't know, okay, yeah, they're hitting the mark or they're not. Like they, this is where I can see they need to improve, right? And we can get them to the mark or do I need to let them go, right? So when you hold on to someone who is not a right fit for your team, they're an underperformer, again, that's going to cost you a lot more than what you see today or even this week, this month. Make sense? Yes. So know your toleration level. And this is something that we talk about in advertising a little bit um, in regards to your stop loss. So a stop loss is before I go into an ad spin, I want to know like what my max number I'm willing to either lose on the front or the max I'm willing to pay for lead. And so you should establish the same metrics um, for your team. Like how much am I willing to tolerate for you know, these people's performance, the KPIs, the emotions, all these things. Like have clarity on that stuff before you even bring people in. Because what you don't want to happen is you have someone that you hire and you're emotionally attached to them because this has happened to us, right? You're emotionally attached to them in regards to, you might love the person, you might really like them as a person, but as a performer and what they've been brought in to your company for, to do a job, they might be drastically underperforming. So if you don't set for you that internal toleration level, then it could be really dangerous because if you like the person but they're an underperformer, then it could really cost you. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. So Before, you don't want to get into a phase where you're emotional because you're like, oh my gosh, should I let this person go? Like, but I really like them. They're really nice, right? And then you just keep them on. And it gets to a place where not only is it unhealthy for you, but it'll be unhealthy for them. Yeah. You have to be able to, to strategically sit down and, number one, set priorities. Do you need quick, somebody to take over quickly? Are you dying somewhere and you're, like, going to throw in the towel if you don't hire someone to do this for you? Uh, how many of you would say you spend at least three hours a week just thinking? Okay. So if you're not doing this, and if you're like, well, what does thinking really mean? You're not doing it then. That dis disqualifies you from that. Sitting and thinking, how much time do you think you spend a week just thinking, planning, strategy, like where are we headed? Probably six hours. Okay. And you're trying to bump that up. Yeah. You have to be able to sit down and be like, what do I need right now? Is this something that I need right now? Something Chris has written down here is you have to hire a talent in proportion to how much time you have before you need them to take over. So if you have, let's say like a long runway and here's today and you need this person to be up and running by December, <coughs> that's a pretty decent runway. Bro, can I just say I love when you draw on that board? <laughs> it's it's really what I'm paid for, it's drawing on the board. This is a pretty long runway. You can hire somebody and you can train this person because you have six months to develop them. All of our like, HR people are like, six months is not a long runway. But for us, it, it, it is. And for you, it probably is as well. So you can hire an intern. You can bring somebody in who's maybe not as familiar with your business. How many of you feel like you need somebody next week to take something over? Keep your hands up. Come on, this is fam. Y'all better get out of this weirdness. You need someone like next week. The, the difference is here is you're going to have to hire somebody who's, ha who's got industry experience. They're going to be more expensive. Uh, for the freelancers, you know, you can get it good, cheap, or fast. Pick two. It's this sort of similar model with hiring. Is, you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to this? Nope. Setting priorities. Make sense? Yes. How many of you have priorities right now, or do you need to think about it? 
What'd you say? Think about it? Good. Uh, I'm just going to j- jump down to the job descriptions. Um, one of the big mistakes we made in hiring people is we had over-engineered job descriptions. And Ben would come in and take over client success, and he has 17 priorities. Have fun. Uh, the problem with this is people can only really focus on like one or two things. So we made a lot of mistakes with our people and the job descriptions and being like, this is your one area. We didn't do that. It took us way too long. Um, keep this in mind when building your, your job descriptions. A good book on hiring and job descriptions is, is a book called Who? W-H-O. Have you read that book? Who's it by? Jeff something? Yeah. Is Jeff spelled like G-E-O-F or something? Yeah. It's a weird way to spell the name. It's like Goof. It's by a guy named Goof. Uh, it's, it's, about, it's about top grading, which is a particular type of hiring and building scorecards. And by the way, if you're in Elite, don't ever forget that you have access to uh, Tommy, who hires Jeff Start. Smart. Smart. So you guys can you know, get access to our team as well to talk about how do we build job scorecards and how do we build job descriptions. But keep in mind, your, your tendency as an entrepreneur is you're going to want to hire one person who can come in and be you and replace you. That is impossible. You hire one person to replace one facet of you and another person to replace a different facet of you. If you actually take in how many people we'd have to hire to replace me and Chris, this isn't an ego thing. We're talking about 20 people because we wear different hats at different times and it's not fair to hire one person and expect them to be me because then they're going to be an entrepreneur and have their own business. Make sense? So can I just put a note on this? This is why the thinking time for you as the CEO is crucial. Because you have to have the ability to zoom in and out. And a lot of times the issue that you're going to have is you don't actually have scheduled time to zoom out of your business. If you're just in the weeds, you know, you can't see what needs to happen, right? And you are not going to be able to bring in the right people, the right talent, if you're not zooming out and seeing the whole picture what is my need today, this week, this month, the next 90 days, the next six months? So that is, that is really, really important. A lot of people, they discount it because they think that, oh, I'm not working. But as a CEO, I'd say it's probably the most important time on your calendar. It's taking time to think about your business, where you are right now, where you're going, so that you are taking the right steps. Because if not, you'll just go in circles or you'll veer off. So it's going to be way more strategic and way more beneficial for you. What are some of the questions that you ask somebody who's like applying for a marketing role? Um, Well, for marketing specifically, I start with personality. Like I want to know if they have the certain characteristics of what I've seen has been successful for us. So um, specifically like for media buying, because that's the top of my mind, I'm bringing in new media buyers. Typically someone who's a successful media buyer, they're not going to have emotional swings. So they have to be pretty steady emotionally. So it's I the ask, opposite like, for sales. Yeah, I ask like, are you emotionally steady? <laughs> you know, do you are you just like not going to go up and down? Like, if I come at you and I'm asking you a bunch of questions, you have all this pressure. Like, can you handle that? Um, so that's where I start personally. I think that's really really important. So I get there, Myers Briggs. What is the Myers Briggs you're looking for? Mine. What is it? INTP. <laughs> And I'm looking for the J. Or ENTP. I'm looking for the J. He's looking for the P. Hey, bro. Stay out of the gutter right now, okay? (laughs) So uh, that's a really good point. Because if you can profile the people that are best at what they do, they they probably have the same personalities or really similar. It's like sales, it's INTJ or ENTJ. It's like almost all of them are NTJs. I don't know why that is. I'm an INTJ. Don't even know what it means. (laughs) sort of know what it means. Anything else to add here? Well, yeah, like if, again, if you understand the profile of the person, then you're not going to waste your time talking to someone who might not even fit the role. I have a conversation, like, if it's someone who's past kind of our initial line, then I have a conversation with them and see, like, if they might be a good culture fit. I'm just throwing random questions um, as they come, see how they answer them, and then... If I, because some people I've talked to and they haven't known really 
their personality, um, which could be a good indicator that they're my personality, you know, because awareness is low or whatever. But um, yeah, so like I have that situation right now where I have someone who it could be such an amazing culture fit, but for the personality that I'm, I'm looking for, probably not right for me buyer. But you know, knowing what my other needs are in the company, I could place them somewhere else. Right, so if I have a profile for copyright, a profile for media buyer, a profile for whatever. So that's why the, like, just knowing where you are in the business is really, really important. So that's kind of job descriptions, outcomes, targets, things like that. How many, this is pop quiz, how many things do you want somebody to be responsible for? What's the number? One, One max two. Tommy, you agree with that? Yeah. Every time we've deviated from that rule, I feel like people get, like, all turnt and confused and... It's not good. Hey, what if you could be in the boardroom where we sit down and we plan out how we're going to grow our eight-figure company month in and month out? If you've ever wondered how traffic and funnels grew so quickly, there are strategies, there are formulas that you can model in your business that our clients are modeling to scale to the moon and back. This is an amazing program. It's called Insider's Access Monthly, and we've put together a couple words on a page that you can actually go and check out this offer, trafficandfunnels.com slash IAM. You will not be sorry, I promise you. Let me know what you think.